On the Majority Report, on the phone, it is a pleasure to welcome back to the program Nathan J. Robinson. He is the editor of Current Affairs uh, magazine at currentaffairs.org. Nathan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to be with you, Sam. Okay, so uh, your piece has gotten a lot of people have cited it as uh, being the sort of the yeah. most comprehensive um, uh, piece on the the many myriad of uh, of lies and ways Judge Kavanaugh lied during mm-hmm. his hearing, and uh, we just played a clip from Jeff Flake and Chris Coons. Uh, from 60 mm-hmm. Minutes when they were asked if it was shown that Kavanaugh lied during the hearing, would that be enough to disqualify him? And they said yes. They didn't say specifically shown about lying what or uh, about what or um, or what shown means, right? <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But right. Uh, I suggest that uh, maybe people start sending your piece to them. Uh, or they can just yeah. listen to the show if they don't want to have to, uh, if they can't read. Um, but so, I think whatever ahead. definition of shown you adopt, I think I made it somewhere in the 11,000 words of that article. Um, well, let's, let's, um, let's go through some of these. Um, and we, you, you, you basically just walk through um, without making an assessment of what Ford says, just judging mm-hmm. or I guess assessing what a uh, Kavanaugh says. So uh, you start right. with a uh, Kavanaugh's denial. And this is the first one that you cite. I never attended a gathering like the one Dr. Ford describes in her allegation. Now, uh, please address that for us. And, and to some extent, it's sort of a shame. It feels like the Democrats either didn't have the information long enough beforehand, which is very possible, or they just didn't do enough in researching this stuff to push back. But we have the, 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 uh, yeah. I guess the, the, the value of hindsight, but go ahead. Well, walk us through that. Well, I mean, I, I do think, no, I, I think they had a lot of information and didn't use it. Well, there was plenty of stuff that was just, just in plain sight. Um, but yeah, so the gathering uh, lie, he says, I never attended a gathering like the one Ms. Ford described. And there's this sort of uh, effort to hint that it was like this, that she's describing this kind of big Bacchanalian party, like a toga party or something, like this crazy party that everyone would have remembered. But actually, it, her, her testimony, she says that she's been misrepresented in the press because it wasn't a large party. It was a small gathering with friends in Bethesda with a, over a few drinks. Now, Kavanaugh, of course, attended small gatherings in Bethesda over a few drinks. I mean, when he says he didn't attend a gathering like this, I mean, I'm sure he attended lots of gatherings like this. Um, but then he also goes on to specify and say, I didn't attend a gathering, I also didn't attend the gathering with any of the people. Uh, with with the group of people that that uh, Christine Blasey Ford says were at this gathering, um, and that is just directly contradicted by the calendar that he provided to exonerate himself. Yeah, I mean he he mentions specifically the that July first entry involves six people, mm-hmm. four of whom were ones that she said was at a party very similar to that. Well. Yeah, she named, she said that she remembered uh, four boys, Brett, PJ, Mark Judge, and one whose name she couldn't remember. And on the July 1st entry, July 1st, summer 1982, Brett Kavanaugh says he's going for drinks uh, uh, over to Timmy's with uh, with, uh, Mark Judge, PJ, and a couple of other boys. Um, So... The group, when he tries to say, you know, these weren't my people, right, he started naming other people that he did hang out with over the summer. And he didn't mention the fact that when she said Mark and PJ, those were his friends. He did go to gatherings with them. Um, so it, he, he, the interesting thing here is not is that he also buried that information, right? He tried, he tried deliberately to direct the Senate's attention away from this event by pointing to weekends. He does this fascinating thing where he goes, well, presumably the event she's describing happened on a weekend, and I was usually out of town on the weekend. 
But the third, this, this July 1st gathering is on a Thursday, so you can see why he wants to push you towards the weekend. Now, I, we should also say that on the 1st, there's another guy there, Squee, who is Chris mm. Garrett. And Chris Garrett was, had the uh, a great misfortune of being the evil doppelganger in Ed Whelan's um, <laughs> uh, fevered uh, conspiracy. But he also, in real life, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, the one that Ford said, we uh, uh, introduced me to Kavanaugh. Yes. Yeah, she says that uh, Chris Garrett, Chris Squee Garrett, um, they went out a couple of times, um, and that, yeah, he was her connection to Kavanaugh. And we know that Kavanaugh knew Chris, because he's on the calendar. Uh, so we know he knew Chris Garrett. Now, Chris Garrett, I don't think there's made any public statements about whether he knew Christine Ford. I don't know whether he's backed up or denied uh, what she says. Um, but that would be a connection. Brett Kavanaugh said they didn't move in the same social circles. I mean, Kavanaugh's testimony essentially tries to suggest that she's to- like she's totally off base. She was like at a different school on the other side of town, and we didn't move in the same circles. I never saw this woman. She and and actually, it's that the circles that they moved in turned out to be much much closer than what he described in his testimony. It would be an unbelievable coincidence that this woman had created this fiction about these people who all just happened to be good buddies of Kavanaugh's and he just like out of whole cloth, like she would have come up with this, right? Like how could she possibly know that judge and Kavanaugh were such good friends if she didn't know them? If, right, if he did. And she said that she said um, that she was at this thing with uh, Judge and PJ before he released the calendars, confirming it. Uh, and the other thing is that her account is corroborated by Mark Judge's memoir, because she said uh, in her testimony that six weeks, six to eight weeks later, she ran into Mark Judge, and he looked very embarrassed, and he didn't want to talk to her. She ran into him at his job at the supermarket. And in Mark Judge's memoir, he says that late, late in that summer, he was working at the supermarket. So <laughs> um, there are details that do add up. People say there's no corroboration. I mean, you know, it depends what you consider corroboration. But there are reasons to believe that, uh, um, she, I mean, she's definitely not as Kavanaugh portrayed her. He wanted to suggest that all of this was just totally, totally crazy. I mean, to me... The Chris interviewing Chris Garrett has always struck me uh, to be the the most important uh, person Mm -hmm. they could interview. I mean, obviously, Judge, but Judge is going to get up there and live. It it strikes me Mm -hmm. as Chris Garrett would have a very tough time lying about the fact that he knew that they knew each other. Right. That 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 like, I mean. All it would take is him to say, no, I did. I introduced him to Kavanaugh. Of course she knew Kavanaugh. Of course Kavanaugh knew her. Yeah. And that's the end of the game right there. I mean, that's the, right. the. it seems to me. The, no, it's crucial. And What's he going to say? I mean, if if he says, no, me and, Ford, me and Christy Ford never went out, well, that really hurts you know, what she's saying. But if he says, yeah, she's completely correct about that, then that really does make out a case for Kavanaugh. I mean, we've already made out the case that Kavanaugh lied under oath a bunch of times. You don't need to do it more times. Uh, I stress in this article that the investigation is almost unnecessary at this point, just because from the testimony itself, you have so many damning things. Well, I want to talk about, the, we'll, we'll get to the investigation in a moment to the extent that there is one, uh, because, you know, it's pretty <laughs> arguable that there is not one. Uh, even not even an inquiry and and we will get there but let's go through a couple of these key uh moments so he lied about never being at a party like the one she talks about um in fact Mm -hmm. uh he also later admitted he was at a party almost exactly like the one that she talked about as defined by the people and the location and the sort of offhand and do we have a sense though his argument is like oh we would we would go to Tobin's house and work out. I, wh- what is your sense? I know you don't really touch on in the piece. I'm just curious. Like, there's something weird about the Tobin's house workouts. Because he also, during his testimony, <laughs> well, he got super emotional about about those workouts. Well, 
he got emotional about a lot of things in that testimony. He, when he started talking about his calendars, he started weeping, which was very, very odd. Well, no, I thought um, that was okay because it, <laughs> it reminded him of his dad, and he was doing it because he wanted to be like his dad. And then, he, you know, I, I don't but have that kind I, of relationship. I, but. <laughs> I bought that when I thought, I thought initially when I saw that, that his father was deceased. Right. Uh, and he was reminiscing. But his father was in the room. <laughs> well, maybe he was upset that he had to have his dad hear <laughs> about how he, uh, hear his da- you know, have his dad watch him lie yeah. about this. I, but, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to make of the workout. I, I, I'm, trying to be, I'm trying to be really, really cautious about not speculating. You know, people have emailed me a ton of stuff where they're like, and what about this additional thing? I'm like, yeah, it is fishy and strange. I mean, the whole calendar thing is strange to begin with, like keeping these meticulous calendars. But, you know, I'm trying to have actually, even though I come to a very strong conclusion, I'm trying to produce a really conservative case. All right, so, fair enough. I'm not I, I, arguing. Yeah. All right, I'll respect yeah. that and won't make you go to places where I where I'm going. Um, <laughs> so it says here uh, uh, at one point, uh, Kavanaugh said all the witnesses who were there that day say it didn't happen. Ms. Kaiser, this is uh, Leland uh, Kaiser. This is uh, Ford's friend. This is really, I mean, amazing how many fr- friends. Uh, well, okay. Well, Kavanaugh didn't say. Uh, Ms. Kaiser, her longtime friend, said she never saw me at a party with or without Dr. Ford. Uh, the only problem is that Ms. Kaiser never said that. In fact, none of the people right. gave the denial that uh, that Kavanaugh claimed they did. Just tease that out for us. Yeah, Mark Judge kind of did. And his first statement didn't, and his second statement said, well, I've never seen Brett Kavanaugh do anything like this, which does suggest that it didn't happen. But um, TJ's statement just says, I have no knowledge of this. And I have no knowledge. It's very important. See, Kavanaugh conflated them because he thought people w- wouldn't notice. But I have no knowledge of the thing is not the same as I have knowledge that the thing is false. Um, and, and that's really important because I might not know about something, and it might still be true. Um, and so Leland, Leland Kaiser is, is interesting because this is egregious, right? Brett Kavanaugh goes in front of the Senate and he says, and he emphasizes over and over, I, I collected the clips and it's about five times he says, all of the people say it didn't happen. And then he cites a couple of times he says, Ms. Kaiser, she says it didn't happen. She's the best friend. If she says it, then there's nothing. And, you know, Ford must be crazy, essentially, is the implication. But Ford thinks it did happen. Ford says she, be- she told the Washington Post that she believes Christine Ford, which means that she actually thinks the opposite of what Kavanaugh said she thinks. So, I mean, I, I just think that's his blatant. He knew that. He knows what... <laughs> He's citing what she said, he, but he's, he's, he's just citing the opposite because he thinks he can fool people. Um, so it's just false. He just told a falsehood. <laughs> um, that's another one we'll chalk up uh, for his line. No, I mean, I don't know. I guess how important do you think not lying to the Senate is to be a justice of the Supreme Court? Just, I mean. Uh, I, I, I say pretty important. <laughs> I mean, the whole the whole thing, the whole mythology of the court is the sanctity of the rule of law and oaths of office and the, the, the dignity of the United States government. I mean, if if you just go before the Senate and you just treat the oath of your your oath with total contempt, um, that it should disqualify you not just from being on the Supreme Court, but probably from holding any major government office ever again. Um, let's talk about the country club. There was a real sense, according to Kavanaugh, that like, and I think even the prosecutor was trying to make it like the country club, the, you know, the, the was sort of, everybody was untethered from the country club in some fashion, but that's not exactly the case either, is it? No, we haven't met. Look, the thing, Brett Kavanaugh tried to suggest again that everything was so far apart, we never moved in the same circle. Um, but... When he looked at it, and he said, you know, the country club is not near where I lived, so, and, and uh, Christine Ford said she was at the country club that day. Um, he said, well, that's not where I lived. Well, Bethesda is actually a pretty small, it's about five miles across, I don't know, that's a rough estimate. Um, it's small. <laughs> and, and there was a map presented in the Senate that showed where they all lived, and they all lived within a few miles of each other. And Ford, uh, and I think Kavanaugh actually lived closer to the country club than Ford did. So... 
Uh, I mean, he's again, he's just trying to create an impression that if you actually look into, if you look at a map, you can instantly see is completely false. Also, by the way, one of my favorite facts is that his father and Christine Ford's father were members of the same golf club. So for, <laughs> that's the same circle. They came, they both were at like DC elite schools. Um, so they're very, very close ties here. And they're all making it out like these are huge distances, but I mean, these are all like you can ride your bike in 20 minutes to any of these places. Mm-hmm. 